Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage, and today we are talking about flex fuel and flex fuel tuning. So there are two uh, kind of thought processes that go into flex fuel tuning, and it's based on your setup. Specifically, if you have a vehicle that has an alcohol sensor or the, basically the stock ability to tune flex fuel. And what that means is if you have a, a vehicle that has the yellow cap on it already, or you have a vehicle that you added flex fuel, a flex fuel sensor to, like I did in one of my previous videos that I'll drop a link in the corner for, uh, those you're gonna have a map that's a little bit different. Now, if you're running flex fuel on a specific tune that's not on a vehicle designed to run flex fuel, you're going to tune it like you would any other uh, vehicle. So that being said, if you're doing that, you need to be aware that flex fuel out of the pump or E85 out of the pump is not always going to be in that 80 to 85 percent alcohol range and because of that it can actually vary from 50 percent I think up to 80 percent generally and uh, unless you know for a fact that your fuel is at that 80 to 85 percent mark you need to be careful you need to be testing your fuel if you're doing a flex fuel only tune on a legacy vehicle that does not support the alcohol sensor and that'll start making more sense as we get into this video we're going to go through look at some of the tunes and how it works with the newer style setup where you have the flex fuel tables that are basically a, a additional to your stock fueling tables. So if you were to take a look at what we have nowadays, we have all of our stock fueling timing and all, all these tables are just kind of stock tables and that's what we do all the different tuning for the speed density, the map tuning, the timing tuning. They all affect these stock tables over here and then we have these additional modifiers based on your flex fuel. So if this is 0% alcohol over here on the stock table, and then this modifier is for 85% uh, ethanol, there is a linear progression from point A to point B in which these things get added in. So if it calls for 10% additional timing on E85 over here on top of your base map, there may only be five degrees of timing if you're running at 40% ethanol content. And that steps up, so it might be base timing, two degrees, you know, four degrees, six degrees, eight degrees, 10 degrees, whenever you get through the scale. That's the nice thing about having the alcohol sensor. And the cool thing about it is, is, is if you get your stock timing or your stock tables dialed in properly, your flex fuel tables for the most part are going to be good to go already. So let's dive into the program here. I've got a 2014 stock Silverado pulled up that had flex fuel from the factory. We'll look at how these tables interact. Okay. Here we have a 2014 Silverado open, and we're gonna start out here in the flex fuel tab. And as you can see, we're enabled and we're using sensor, which means we are actually pulling in an alcohol content level and using that to dial in our flex fuel. Then we have a blend range. This is the factory blend range, zero to 80%. Anything over 80% shouldn't exceed 85%, so that last 5%, I guess, is not important, is what this is telling me as far as GM is concerned. But if we go over and we look at our general fuel, fuel table, we will now have a new uh, stoichiometric range based on the flex fuel starting at 14.7 for standard gasoline and all the way up to 8.97 uh, for 100%. Flex fuel is around 9.8 and so showing that at 87.5 we're actually at 9.68 so that's about right for where we should be on the ratio. And as you can see, if you pull up the graph, the 2D chart, and we expand this thing out, it's linear, straight across the board. And that's the cool thing about it. Because it's linear, we can then go in there and know that as we move through the percentages, it's going to make a percentage adjustment across the board for alcohol. This is our ideal lambdas. This is, the cool thing about it is if you're tuning in Lambda, this is going to look exactly the same on alcohol and gasoline. That's the nice thing. That's why we tune on Lambda. I've harped on this since the beginning. I've told you if you're tuning in AFR, stop because you want to learn in Lambda. Because one is stoic no matter what fuel you're running. And if it's 14.7 for gas or 986 for E85, it's always going to be one Lambda. The math always works out to one Lambda. And as I said, your wideband gauges, they all read in one lambda. They are then applying math to it to make it read in AFR. Okay, here's a good one. If we have, if we go into power enrichment, look, we have our power enrichment for gasoline, and then we have our power enrichment table for alcohol. And the cool thing, E85 is more knock resistant because of the way that uh, ethanol burns, 
and the fact that it actually burns cooler, you can run a little bit more advancement. And then there's going to be a little bit more uh, fuel required, as, as I said, whenever we're running the 85. It's a 30% bump over standard gasoline. So we need to be aware of that. One of the few places that you're going to see the biggest change on this is like on your spark table. So if we go into spark and under advanced, we have this base high octane table. This is your standard timing table. If you go over and look here on your fuel, you have a flex fuel table. This is the actual the timing that is being added as you get up to 85% alcohol. So at 85% in this, this area, you're going to be adding 15 to 16 degrees. We could actually go in here and probably add a couple more degrees. This is going to be a little bit conservative from the factory, but without having a dyno, you can overshoot the, the max amount of power whenever it comes to adjusting spark. Spark is ideal where you want it to ignite at a certain point during the compression that you're getting the most drive on the piston as everything propagates. Now, if you ignite too soon, you can actually be fighting the compression cycle and rob yourself of horsepower. Uh, that's why adjusting timing just off of the knock sensor is not the most economical, or not even economical, not the most efficient way of dialing timing in. So just be aware of that. If you do have the option of getting it onto a dyno, that's a great time to uh, make some adjustments to the timing table, see if you pick it up anywhere. But as you can see, this is, a, uh, this is additive to your base timing tables. So any changes that you've already made to dial in this, this uh, high octane table is going to carry over. It's just going to add in through this base timing table. So if we go over and we look at uh, the airflow and underneath speed density, you're going to see that we're going to have a multiplier. And the multiplier is not going to make a lot of sense by looking at it other than it doesn't look like it scales properly. It's probably a somewhat linear for the most part. But you have to remember that this multiplier is based on the VE coefficient tables. And so if we go into virtual VE, uh, we're going to see a virtual map. If we adjust that multiplier, it's not going to necessarily adjust that map directly. It is being applied to those other coefficients. Probably a good idea just to leave that alone. Last but not least, one of the things that we want to look at is going to be the virtual torque tables. As I said, we have to tune these based on the fact that we're running E85 and there's going to be a linear line between our base air mass table and our E85 air mass table. Same ordeal with our map table and our E85 air map table. So as we make those corrections on the air map tables, we need to make sure and, and make corrections on the E85 tables whenever we're doing torque tuning. I've got another video out there in the tuning series that goes specifically into doing the torque tuning and making those torque curves match up to the power that your vehicle is actually making. This is something I've got to go back and personally do on the truck myself because I've never adjusted the torque tables in the past. I haven't need to, never been able to run E85, but now that I can, I've got to go and make those corrections. So that's about it. As I said, if, if you are coming into this with already having a tune off of gasoline setup, adding E85 to the mix is easy, especially if you have the alcohol sensor on there that's going to do the blend. We just need to go through and make sure that we are blending to a ratio. Now we can tune those additional timing tables and we can also go in and adjust maybe the PE for the alcohol blend and, and dial some of that stuff in. But for the most part, you can leave a lot of that as is and just reap the benefits over the stock tuning that you've already done on your system. As I said, if you are coming to this with an older vehicle that does not support the alcohol sensor where you're wanting to set up an E85 tune on there, just be aware of the fact that that ratio of alcohol varies. You need to test it. You can get the equipment to test for cheap. You know, it's, and it's a pretty straightforward process. It seems to be fairly accurate. So just make sure that you are getting the same consistency of alcohol in your fuel every time. That way you don't run into any issues. Uh, on top of all that, as I've noted in the past, E85 takes 30% more fuel flow all the way, you know, at the max. Because of that, you need to be aware of whether or not you're maxing your injectors out. On a direct injected engine, that's going to be an, a pulse width of about six, in, six milliseconds or so. Uh, and then on a standard port injection, that's going to be whenever you're running into the 90% plus duty cycle. So if you're at 90%, you don't have enough fuel delivery for an additional 30%. Same ordeal, if you're at six milliseconds, you don't have enough time for an additional 30% of time on that milliseconds if you do the math. Now, instead, just do the math, take what you have on your standard uh, pulse width or duty cycle and uh, 
check it out. Make sure that you've got room for it because if not, you need to do supplemental fueling. In fact, I've got an additional methanol injection nozzle coming in to help support because I know that I do not have enough fueling capability on the truck on E85. So I can't go out there and run into boost right now. Just something to keep in mind as you go through this process. But other than that, this is straightforward. The cool thing about it is, is a lot of these platforms where people are going to be running E85, you're already going to have everything in place. We're just double checking everything. And you can tune on E85 and still tune off the base map. So you can go in there and be running E85 and still do speed density tuning the same way that you've seen in my videos in the past. You can still adjust the virtual volumetric table and then let the math work out based off the alcohol sensor. Same ordeal with the timing. You can leave the E85 bump the same on the timing, tune the base timing table and let that adder table take over and do what it has to do. So. Doesn't really change much. There are additional parameters on there, but you're probably not gonna pick up a ton of horsepower unless you have access to a dyno to see what it is because the real big benefit on E85 is being able to run that additional timing I talked about. Uh, without seeing whether or not that additional timing is actually helping propagate the uh, combustion, uh, it's, it's hard to tell whether or not there's benefits from it. This is not something where you're going to get seat of the pants. You might get seat of the pants just from the additional timing based off of the standard E85 tables that are in there. So, so that's about it. You know, it, it said it's pretty straightforward where we're still doing everything off of our base maps. We can still tune against our base maps uh, and just let the alcohol adder maps do what they do for the E85 tune. Uh, I want to thank everybody for the time, you know, it, all the great questions and comments you guys have been leaving behind on the videos and the likes, subscribes, man, you guys have been great. I appreciate everybody tuning in. We've got some cool stuff coming up. So I'm going to do an overview on the installation of an additional methanol jet. I'll go over the AEM V2 methanol injection kit that I use on my truck, kind of go in a little more in depth on that. And that will also mean that there will be a video showing how to tune for the methanol injection because I'm going to basically be doubling my injection rate, which will change all of my speed density and math tables. So uh, be looking for that in the next week or so. And then I've got a surprise coming out next week that we'll get into that's going to be pretty crazy, pretty stupid. You know, it's going to be one of those things where a lot of you are going to ask, why would anybody do this? So make sure if you haven't subscribed already, click the button down in the corner. And as always, thanks for stopping by the garage.